The following podcast is a Dear Media production. So our guest today is Jenna Ushkowitz. You know her from Glee. She's an actress, singer, producer, and the host of the podcast show. And that's what you really missed all about her time on Glee. And now she's a new mama too. Jenna, thank you so much for being here. You're our very first guest on Good Instincts. I'm so honored and congratulations. Thank you for having me. I'm... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I feel like I've gotten the gold medal of podcasts. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really fun. It's it's a really fun guest for us to have, I think, for so many reasons. But first of all, before we get into it, how was your Thanksgiving? Oh, how are you doing? Thanks, I'm full. Um, definitely full. Um, happy Thanksgiving to everybody and to you. I this is my favorite holiday, so I'm like super excited. Um, we do like multiple Thanksgivings over this weekend. So I, it's like never ending. I'm just con- continuing to eat all the time. Um, but it was really, really great. It's really lovely. And it's um, my daughter's first Thanksgiving. So it was really special. That is so special. And I feel like a lot of people, people have different thoughts on leftovers are you a leftover person are you 1000 percent? i'm actually like a moist maker girl i don't know the friends reference. tell me more um so there's a friends <laughs> reference if you're a friends fan you'll know where ross makes the moist maker or monica makes the moist maker where you, you do a piece of bread and gravy in the middle of, of a turkey sandwich and um so i'm a big moist maker fan <laughs> i love that <laughs> I, I the great great terminology. I think I maybe it's sounding semi familiar. Yes. Um. But you mentioned your daughter, and it's been so special to watch you transition into motherhood. Oh, thank and you. it's such an it's such an intimate and vulnerable time. And like getting to see a close up look at someone's life during that time. I don't know. I think it really helps people. And you know, I know that you've been really into self care for a while. Mm-hmm. And then when you have a baby, there's kind of this transition period where you're like, oh, what's kind of like the baseline self-care I need? Totally. And I was I was wondering how that time was going for you and how you were doing in that transition. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I think like I always try to be pretty transparent on social media. And I think it's like so important. You don't see like moms with babies crying so much like you see all the good things and their perfect outfits and you know all of this and it's just not reality so I just try to be as honest and open as I possibly can because social media can be so damaging as much as it brings joy and good things as well um yeah I've always been uh, or in the last like probably five to ten years I've been really mindful about like my self-care and putting myself first and making sure that I like take care of myself for and then now even more important because I have to take care of my family and my baby and um you know it's like literally we were on a flight the other day and they were like please put your mask on first and I was like is that a metaphor or is that physically like what you mean because I (laughs) um the flight attendant I was like yes that's right um it's going well it's going really well i am very lucky to have had my husband who took off had many many weeks that he was able to take off on paternity leave so i had help you know and that was um that was really helpful in just like getting in a shower every day <laughs> and like <sighs> eating big eating something and having your water bottle filled up and you know all these like simple things that seem so minute but become like luxuries um and now i think like the biggest thing for me is uh working out is like a huge part of my self-care routine every day i was working out even throughout my pregnancy i was lucky enough to have such a good um physical experience of pregnancy so i was able to move my body and um that kind of came to a screeching halt you know i had a c-section and i had to really take care of myself also so part of self-care is like letting yourself slow down and teaching yourself how to like actually like give your body the time that it needs to heal. Um, and I thought that was going to be really, really hard for me because of the way that I have functioned pre-pregnancy and pregnancy. Um, I actually was very, the, probably the kindest I've ever been to my body um, in this time. And I don't know if it's just looking at her that you're like, yeah, I did that. And, you know, this is this is more important now. Like there was some sort of reflection that I had that I was like all the the bad self-talk that I had to my body and all the things that I used to like do and say 
Um, number one, I want to be a great role model for her and have her have a good um, outlook on her her own physical self and also how her mother talks about herself. Um, and then also just like, I think I, I'm just so amazed by the body and the a female body and what it can do. So um, it's going well. It's just, it's really hard. <laughs> That's not all of that said, like all that stuff that I talked about is not easy work. It's a lot of work completely and that was so beautifully said and I think that that's kind of the point it's all of those things all at once yes <laughs> and I also had I also had a c-section and as you were saying that it so many things uh, came up and I think the thing for me which it sounds like maybe for you too is it was a complete loss of ego oh. and I had never had that in my entire like I was just like who even cares about any yes. like and it was so freeing and then you get to a point where you kind of toggle back a little bit and you're like oh I actually do care about a couple things but I do think that there's like that temporary loss of ego that winds up being so healthy and freeing that's exactly what it was it was really freeing it was the wildest thing because <sighs> You're, you know, I used to be just so in control of like what I would do and say and then out of control of not, you know, controlling what like I can, how I can speak to myself. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, you have no, you have no other options. You have no other options right now. Um, but to be kind and gentle and like for yourself and for your family and for your baby. So I love that. Yeah. You know. I see your rebounder in the back <laughs> and um, I know I followed along on that journey of, of rebounding all through pregnancy and I love watching you do it and it seemed to me like a religious practice and I was wondering if there was like a mental health aspect to that as a well. A million percent. Um, I started bouncing probably over two years ago now, maybe three. Oh my God. Um and I was determined through my pregnancy that I was still going to be able to get on my trampoline because it was honestly one of my biggest fears was like I wasn't going to be able to bounce. Um, I was able to do it up until about six months, um, but I had really bad like ligament pain. So it, was, it just didn't feel good. And it, it that's scary when things don't feel good during pregnancy. You go like, OK, that's my body saying like, don't do that. Um, so that was kind of hard for me to, to stop. But I would do like little things on it like little spurts just to like get myself like on the trampoline so I'd feel better um, but now I'm back I'm fully back I took all the time to heal um, yeah and, and it was also funny because like on social media the people who don't know me were like you stop doing this to your body this isn't good for you um, even afterwards they're like please stop doing that to your pelvis and I'm like okay well Again, social media can be just so dam damaging sometimes, yeah. but I listen to myself and I listen to my doctors and <laughs> um, and I feel so happy that I am back on the trampoline and doing it when I can fit it in. Good, good. It, it makes such a big difference when you have a little practice. And the other thing about it is that, and I think this is especially true after you have a baby, which is your perception of what a real workout looks like so it doesn't have to be an hour like for you to be on for 15 minutes and kind of move your body and totally. move around like is a major yes yes um I was like exercising at least an hour maybe sometimes two and not like crazy like I have to work out but like playing tennis and then bouncing in the same day and like now I'm like I mean I'm lucky if I get 15 minutes in but I actually am like grateful for the 15 minutes now you know yeah it really does change things yes I um you know, I think that in this journey, it sounds like you've been really listening to your gut, which mm -hmm. I think is the most important thing a mom can do, like to really hone that. And one of the thing that, things that I really admired was the fact that you kind of really listened to your gut and you not only kept your daughter's face off social media, but you also kept her name up until very recently. And yeah. it's not a judgment about doing that or not doing it. It's more just a celebration of a mom really listening to what felt really right for her. Yes. And I wanted to know if you could share a little bit on that. Sure. And I was also wondering if if boundaries, it's, it feels like a really healthy boundary. And I was wondering if you've always been really good at boundaries. Ah. <laughs> 
ahead. Um, <laughs> let me answer that first. No, I'm not, I am yeah. not always good at boundaries. It took a really long time, a lot of work, a lot of therapy. Um, I'm an amazing therapist I see every week. And um, that was something I had to learn because I was such a welcome mat. I was a people pleaser. Um, and that's all I wanted to do was not upset the apple cart. And, you know, that was a huge huge thing for me probably in my 20s to figure out in all of my relationships from family to friends to you know romantic relationships so no I wasn't always good at that so thank you for saying that um yeah the social media like I said throughout this interview is like it can be such a scary world um, and I think even more so now having a daughter in Los Angeles, it really is um, a daunting thing to think about her getting on a phone. I mean, it's it's um, with the filters and the way that we see the world. And if you don't have a good grasp on what it is that you're looking at, it can be really hard for people. And mental health is such a thing. And, and so I'm... You know, I'm really wary of that and I'm trying to start early, um, especially for me. It's a business as well. And it's um, it's a part of a way for me to connect with fans and with new followers who have kind of joined my motherhood journey. Um, and I'm so grateful for the support, truly, like the most the best response I've gotten is when I when I um post these very honest stories about my postpartum journey and I was just I don't think I could have done it without these other mamas like kind of cheering you on and saying I went through the same thing you're you're gonna come out of it stronger um but yeah I, I chose not to share Emma's name it wasn't even like a really conscious thing you know we had started one before I gave I gave birth my husband and I had decided he's not on really on social media at all he doesn't really love it so we decided like let's stay in the cocoon for a little bit for as long as we possibly can um and and then it kind of stuck and I kind of just liked it and I had this instinct again listening to myself of like my mom instinct came out and I was like I have to be protective of her I don't know who like who's seeing her face and and you know it's like it's hard out there you have a, there's like it's such a huge kind of virtual world and so um i got really protective but i felt so grateful for the support that i had gotten and i did want to share and i do want to share and i talk about her so much so i wanted to share her name her name is emma and um oh. i just wanted to kind of give people a piece but also um be really transparent with, with the fact that i'm not ready and that's okay um people should not expect or feel obliged to have to share every part of their um their world and so i i mean i think all of those things were just kind of the culmination of like deciding that if i decide to show her face at some point i will if it feels good i will but right now like i'm really enjoying this time of like keeping her kind of to ourselves. I love it so much. And I think that those types of boundaries really translate to healthy boundaries and overall health. I think it's a it's an amazing evolution for you also personally. Yeah. Um, thank, thank you. <laughs> I listened to the most recent episode of your podcast. <laughs> uh, and it's all about you guys talking to the creator of Glee, Ryan Murphy. Mm -hmm. And I was really struck by your conversation. One thing in particular, which was that, you know, it sounds like at the very beginning, he was really hands on with you guys. And then as the show went on, he wound up being pulled away more to the business side of being less involved. Yeah. And it sounds like you guys had a lot of feelings about that. And when you guys got together more recently, you had an opportunity to kind of tell him mm -hmm. how that felt for you. Yes. Um, and I was wondering how, how that felt to be able to kind of share something that was a really big emotional thing and then get to be able to be like, you know what, this is how it felt. Yeah, I mean, um, I think that the biggest thing that we have taken away with Ryan in the last year has been um, healing, the word healing. Um, it's 
he was incredibly candid and open and vulnerable on the podcast. And we're so grateful for that. Not, not a lot of people get to hear him that way, but that's how we know him. So I was really grateful that we, he was able to kind of, he was willing to share that with the world um, and his experience with Glee, which he doesn't talk about a lot. Um, yeah, there was definitely a reckoning and I feel like, or I felt in that time when we were able to kind of off offload, like it was like, being abandoned by a father um, figure in many, many ways. And, and that will bring up so much pain, you know, and, and resentment and anger over time, if it doesn't go resolved, and it goes unresolved. So um, to go that many years without really being able to speak your piece and feeling like you may actually never be able to do it, to have that moment, like, I thank Naya for that every day, because she's the she she had the most unfiltered mouth you would ever, ever meet. And so of course she would make us all talk, you know? And so we were really grateful mm -hmm. for that. Um, and with Ryan, it was like, it just felt like um, true healing. Like I feel very resolved and it's partially why we were able to come back to the podcast in this new, you know, format and way with IR. Like we just, we felt, um, we felt ready again. And I think that was really important or we probably wouldn't have done it. I love that so much. And it's so funny because as you were saying that, and I, I remember on the podcast, there was that like absentee, it felt like that absentee father feeling. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I think is so special about that is like with people we love, we can't expect for people to never disappoint us. But the thing I think we really need is to be able to, when they disappoint us, to be able to say, hey, that felt really shitty to me. Yeah. And for them to be, and it sounded like he really owned it. And he was like, that must have felt really awful. And I get that. And I wish I had been more present. And, and when he said that, there was a part of me that was like, whoa, yeah. that is so healthy. Yeah. And it really trans it translates back to parenting, which is like yes. with our own kids. And I know with my son, Oliver, you know, you'll say something or you'll snap at something just because like you're overwhelmed and tired and whatever. Yeah. And to be able to be like, oof, can I get a do over? Like, I don't like the way I said that. Totally. Um, um, yeah, no, absolutely. It was really, um, it was, it was really empowering and also really healing to hear him respond that way you're right like he could have just said thank you for saying that and i appreciate you sharing but like he really took ownership of it um and accountability yeah. of it and that felt really like so much growth had happened totally like peer i'm sorry period totally. which is totally. really really nice it feels really good yes <laughs> that's harder um, <laughs> to say than, than it is <laughs> it actually really is yeah yeah so there's a new documentary coming out about <laughs> a lot of the tragedies that surrounded your show, which is really unique. Yeah. And I was wondering kind of how you were feeling about it. Is this like scratching old wounds? Is this kind of healing in a way? Are you kind of completely detached from it? Yeah, I'm pretty detached from it, um, to be honest. Uh, the documentary is not associated with Ryan Murphy um, or any of the creators of the show. And that is really disappointing to me. Um, and it felt like timing wise with the podcast, our podcast coming out and having Ryan's blessing and him coming on the show and talking about his experience, it made it even more profound and important to look at your sources um, because you know, yeah, this documentary they've already said is going to be very much featured around the whatever the behind the scenes that they think happened and the the tragedies and the glee curse or whatever you want to call it, which we hate. Um, and, you know, to be honest, it was like I just wanted Kevin and I really felt compelled to share the million good things that happen versus the five bad things that you see in the media. And so for us yeah. to have control over it, I mean, we were watching Selena Gomez's documentary the other day and my husband and I were talking about it afterwards. And you see all these amazing documentaries of these massive, massive artists who you think you know, and then they get to share their story. And like, it felt like um, being in control of what the media takes so out of control was actually really empowering for us and felt really important to do. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting to bring it back to the other documentaries, which is like there are some that you really do feel like you get this really 
healing inside look and totally. it all kind of depends on how it's done totally totally and who's doing it right like if yeah if gaga has control over it and selena has control over it and you know these things like you know it's it's a very different story than somebody who's coming from the outside and um you know i just will say about the documentary like nobody i know is involved in it got it got it that makes complete sense. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you have your podcast yeah. <laughs> because it is the whole point of it for anyone that is interested, which I'm sure a lot of people are because this having this inside look at this show that I think w most of America were huge fans of and it was a family just like, totally. I mean, over years and years and years to be able to um, get an inside look. And I love the format of the rewatching. Yeah. Um, are there <laughs> Is there anything um, we should be keeping our eyes and ears peeled for? Yeah, I mean, we're we're definitely recapping the show, so we we do we are trying to do it in an interesting and fun way for both all of our listeners and also for me and Kevin because like it is a long show and it's a long running show and sometimes it gets real weird to be honest and so <laughs> we we want to keep it fun and light and we really want to talk about because it had um the infusion of like all the top hits of you know in music and like Ryan said a love letter to music was the show really like to have all of these kind of outside forces impacting the and influencing the way the show kind of went and like what songs we did and um you know what what like mashups we did um we really are interested in diving into that and the phenomenon of like what celebrities were fans of the show and like you know who grew up with the show that's now super famous so we we, we really want to kind of get into that as well and so um i think it'll be really different and exciting and fun than what we were doing before i love that so much it's a really really fun show i very <laughs> much enjoyed like doing like i'm i'm subscribed i'm a fan thank i'm you. into it i'm ready <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> So I ask everyone two questions that I think are really kind of a nice way to get like a real peek, although we have had such a good peek already. <laughs> um, but I, I really wanted to know what's something that's making you feel really grounded right now? It could be truly anything, a practice or a person or a mindset. Hmm, that's really good. Um you know, having a new or an infant, I guess she's not a newborn anymore. That's crazy. Um, having an infant <laughs> or a baby um, and coming out of like this really crazy pandemic time, um, taking things literally minute by minute um, has been really grounding for me, like not getting too ahead of myself. I'm such a planner. Um you know, it's such a control freak in some ways. I love like order. And so having a child, you can't, you know, you have to kind of like submit to what's what's in front of you and slowing down. So that has been really grounding for me and just really appreciating how fast the time is moving. I love that so much. I think that's really important for people to hear because it's so true. You're just like rushing to get to the end of the day and like rushing to get to the end of the week and then rushing to get to the end of the year. And you're like, why? <laughs> so yes, completely. that's been my new perspective, at least for right now. <laughs> I love it. And the last question I have for you is what is a meal or snack that you could never get sick of? Oh, my God. Well, here's a really funny story, short story. Um, I never had a sweet tooth. My husband has a sweet tooth. So at night, like I'd be eating chips and he'd be eating chocolate, right? Um, during my pregnancy, I had a sweet tooth. I would love gelato and ice cream and all of the fun things. That never went away. So I have a full sweet mm. tooth now. Um, and I have to have like something sweet at the end of my night now. And so uh, I still think though that like, I couldn't go without potato chips. <laughs> I would never get sick of them. There's too many varieties and there's too many, like every bag is different. <laughs> I get that. Oh, you're, the branding matters to you. A million percent. <laughs> yeah, I love it's that. Like, it's like, um, are you in the mood for one or like a thicker chip or a thinner chip? Uh, it's it's a thing, but no, I will never get sick of I a love potato that. chip. I love it. Um, Jenna, thank you so much for being here. It was so lovely to speak to you. I think this was so, 
I think a lot of people are going to be really excited to listen to Thank this. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was, um, it's just like my favorite to talk about um, what you are doing on your podcast and like talking about mindfulness and self-care and self-love and all of the things. So thank you so much. Hmm. Um, well, thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. See you soon.